Oh, Jackie Vernon is here tonight. He's a very funny guy on stage, but backstage, he's real quiet. Uh, this morning, he came in and shook hands with me, and my hand fell asleep. That's how quiet this wonderful man is. Here he is, Mr. Jackie Vernon. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to direct my talk to all the introverted men in the audience. You know who you are. If you were shy, timid, meek, you shouldn't feel too bad about it because the meek shall inherit the earth. They won't have the nerve to refuse it. <laughs> my own personal experiences may help you. To look at me now, you'd never believe that I used to be a dull guy. Everything about me was dull. My favorite comedians were Ted Mack, <laughs> John Cameron Swayze. I seem to have trouble being liked. Dale Carnegie once punched me in the mouth. <laughs> Things would happen to me that could never happen to anyone else. When I was a kid, I had a rocking horse that died. I traded my Etzel in for Kaiser Frazier. <laughs> Every time I try to do something good, I get into trouble. When President Johnson declared war on poverty, I went out and threw a hand grenade at a beggar. <laughs> my life seemed to be one rejection after another. My analyst said that I suffered from schizophrenic tendencies with paranoid overtones. I asked, what does that mean? He said, it means you're a latent creep. <laughs> Actually, I should say my ex-analyst, because I don't go to him anymore. I caught him going to a fortune teller. <laughs> he was a little too weird for me anyway. I walked in his office one day. I said, I'm feeling a little schizophrenic. He said, well, that makes four of us. <laughs> You're probably wondering what changed me from the prosaic deadbeat I was to the effervescent gay blade I am today. <laughs> Let me explain. I think it was Albert Einstein that once said, scratch a man who looks like a turnip, and you find a man who looks like a scratch turnip. <laughs> How true. <laughs> you see, my problems began in childhood. I came from poor but poverty-stricken people. <laughs> We used to receive food from Europe. <laughs> we were really destitute. We'd use things like powdered water. <laughs> you just add a little milk. <laughs> I wouldn't take a bath unless they blindfold my rubber duck. <laughs> in fact, I'm still very shy. I can't address in front of a prince's phone. <laughs> The heart of my rejection occurred when I was about eight years old. I was put up for adoption by my foster parents. <laughs> and then I was adopted by a Korean family. <laughs> Later on in school, a girl got me in trouble. me to my book, which will be out in a few weeks. It's called The Dull Man's Guide to Meeting Girls of the Opposite Sex. <laughs> this book tells the dull man where and how to meet a girl. A very good place for the dull man to meet a girl is at the beach, especially in the winter. There's less competition. <laughs> how should the dull man approach a girl at the beach? Well, I suggest as he walk by her, he hum or mumble an innuendo type song. Something like, mm, birds do it, bees do it. <laughs> Hi there. What time is the ocean closed? Can I blow up your beach ball? If she ignores you, you'll have to come on a bit stronger. You might try putting around the sand with your toe and saying, I seem to lost my Congressional Medal of Honor here somewhere. <laughs> a 
Oh, well, I have another one at home. <laughs> another very good place to meet a girl is out on a cruise. She'll probably be in a deck chair. And here, the approach would be rather subtle. Hi there. You live around here? <laughs> you believe in omens? Isn't that the captain out there in a lifeboat? <laughs> Another very exciting place to meet a girl is in a nudist colony. However, I would suggest you look her straight in the eyes at all times. <laughs> Hi there. Long time no see. <laughs> Care for a game of volleyball? <laughs> Simon? new around here. What do you do with the keys when you lock the car? I keep throwing them around. It's going to be a very exciting book, so please get it. You've been so great, I have a bonus for you. I'd like to show you some slides of my recent vacation. And slides are always a lot of fun. If you'll just look up here. In this first slide, I'm getting my car ready for the trip. And that's my car there, a little blue job, 49 Nash Rambler. And that's me inside, changing the sheets. <laughs> it's a great little car. I just made the final payment about a week ago. It doesn't run anymore, but I sleep in it. <laughs> this is the first day of my trip, entering the Holland Tunnel. This is the second day of my trip, coming out of the Holland Tunnel. <laughs> Here I am at the toll booth, tossing some money into the basket. Here I am under my car, looking for the money. <laughs> this was a few days later on the highway. I'm picking up a hitchhiker. There's a hitchhiker holding me up. There I am, hitchhiking. There's the hitchhiker again, picking me up my own car. Luckily, she didn't recognize me. This a little roadside restaurant. I stopped and had a bit of lunch. The food was terrible. I never complained, but cream cheese isn't supposed to make noise. <laughs> it's a horrible place. I ordered cherry herring, and they brought me a dish of herrings with cherries all over it. <laughs> it was hard to drink. The bowls got stuck in my throat. <laughs> How'd that one get in there? Here are the Wombapi Indians praying for rain. Here they are in a flood. They overprayed. Now we shoot all the way down to the Everglades in Florida. If you ever visit the Everglades, one thing you must have is a guide because it's very dangerous country. So I went to a place called Get a Guide Agency. There's a man behind a desk with a big cigar in his mouth. He says, come in, boy, what can I do for you? I said, is this Get a Guide Agency? He said, that's right, this is Get a Guide. Can I get your guides? I said, I'd like to get a guide. <laughs> Have you got a guide I can get? <laughs> he said, we got all kind of guides. What kind of guide would you like to get? I said, I'd like to get a guide who'll guide me. <laughs> he said, where'd you hear about get a guide? I said, from a hitchhiker. <laughs> he said, that's good enough for me. And here's the guide I got. His name was Guido, very famous guide. In fact, he was known as Guido the Guide. <laughs> Here's Guido the guide leading me around a bed of quicksand. Here's Guido the guide from the waist up. That's his hat right there. Here's the rescue party rushing to his aid. And there's the rescue party from the waist up. And here we have a lot of hats and ropes. There I am back at Get a Guide. The man said, come on in, can I get you a guide? I said, I had a guide. I like my deposit back. He said, give us another chance, and we haggle back and forth, and here's my new guide. Son of Guido. And that's his hat right there. Well, that's all we have time for. When we meet again, I'll be showing you more exciting slides. Such slides as Mary Poppins stealing umbrellas. Ladybird dancing to an Everett Dirksen record. A shot of Bonnie and Clyde double dating with Sonny and Cher. Also, when we meet again, I hope they have enough money for projecting a screen, because this is ridiculous.